Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be the first video on my tutorial guide series to the Precision Farming add-on DLC by Giant Software. This is a free download for all platforms. So um, yeah, go ahead and download it if you want to check it out. But if you haven't checked out my intro video as far as what kind of the uh, premises behind it and the features are, make sure you guys go check that out. But anyhow, in this video, we are going to cover soil types, soil sampling, buying soil maps, understanding soil maps, and RTK stations. So we're going to cover those five items. If you're looking for one of those specifically, down below in the YouTube slider bar, you should be able to skip ahead to whichever one you specifically are looking for. So first off, we're actually going to talk about the purchase of land because that's what we have to do first before we can buy any soil types. So if we go into here, you'll see over here on the left hand side as well, you'll see this icon right here. This is the precision farming icon, which has a whole new screen, which we'll get into in a little bit. Now, if I want to purchase land, I hit X like I normally would and you buy land like you normally would. But if I click on it, I now get this field info screen that pops up here. Uh, so what it does is it has a few different things and there's some extra things in here that are added, which I really like. So field 55.99 hectares, soil distribution. It says that it's zero. These are the four soil types, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Loamy sand, sandy loam, loam and silty clay. It gives me a percentage of which one those are. So this is actually decent soil here, sandy loam and loam. Um, and then also down here at the bottom, it has the expected yield potential. So it says right now, 100% is expected yield potential that could go up or down depending on the plot. It also says again, down here at the very bottom value is 118,000. And then it shows me the price per hectare. So it's slightly higher than 118 because it's almost a full hectare. So um, that makes sense as far as the math goes, which is pretty cool that it adds that. Now, if we find a really large field down here, um, like field 70, it's going to say 772,000. It's a eight hectare field, but you look down here, it's now got a little bit different price. Now this one, you can see that yield potential is 97%, so a little bit less than the other one. Um, you can see that the soil distribution is a little bit different. This one, 107%, though it does have some silty clay in there, but it's mostly loam, so that probably explains that. This one, 92%. Um, so yeah, again, this is all approximate to, you can see kind of the the, uh, the approximate there. Um, but yeah, so pretty cool as far as buying land now, you have all this different information. Now, when you do purchase a piece of land, so if I buy this, if I buy this piece of land over here, we'll just say, um, we'll buy that. If I go into the precision farming menu, it doesn't show me what any of the soil types are. See, I can't see any of the soil types on here. So the way to actually figure out what soil types or where the soil types are at on the field and to actually start making adjustments, because you can see up here, we can scroll through uh, soil types, pH values, nitrogen values, yield, seed rate, and then back to soil types. So again, in order to see any of this information, we have to take soil samples first. Now, the other option is you can buy a soil map, which I'll cover after we go through soil sampling. So in order to do soil sampling, you need this kind of setup right here. Now, you just need this. You can set it up to a tractor or anything else like that. You don't have to buy the John Deere to do it. This is just how I like to do it here. But this is the Iscaria Scout. This is found in the store. If we go in the store here, scroll down under miscellaneous down here at the very end, you can see it's next to the proactive in there. But right here, the Scout, this is what we want to buy, $17,000 to buy. Now, if you are just going to take a bunch of soil samples, I'd recommend just leasing it. You can lease this guy here for $867, which is a lot cheaper than the 17 grand to buy it, especially if you're just going to run out and do some soil samples. Now, if we hop out of here, we get it all hooked up. I'm going to hop into here and I'm going to open up my help menu. And I'm also going to open up my map because the map is going to be helpful as far as this goes. So up there in the upper left-hand corner, you see some different options. So I'm going to hit X to unfold it. And you see down there, the bottom left-hand corner, our map zoomed in and we have a green circle. That green circle, wherever I decide to take a soil sample, that's going to be the portion of the field sampled. So if I take one right here, which up there in the upper left-hand corner, you can see B is to take a soil sample. I'm going to hit B. You can see it's flashing yellow in the bottom left-hand corner. And you can see it work as it takes its sample. And there we go, soil sample done. Now, if I take another one, we'll just drive over here. Doesn't matter where we take it. We'll just do one here in the middle of the field, doesn't matter. Um, so right now in the upper left-hand corner, you can also see it says soil samples taken one. Now, if I walk over here, let's say I just wanna do one right here. Beautiful, it's gonna take that soil sample for us. I'm not gonna do a ton of them because we don't necessarily need to. Um, so there we go, another soil sample taken. Now, if I fold this guy back up, it's gonna make my map normal again in the bottom left-hand corner. And if we go into the menu here now, um, it should show us if we click this right here, uh, total soil samples taken here. So um, right here I can say purchase soil information if I wanted to purchase a soil map, but right now I wanna send these off to the lab. So up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see Y for send soil samples for analysis. And that's gonna analyze these two areas. I don't even know if analysis is a word, but it's gonna <laughs> analyze, analyze, that's what I wanted to say. It's gonna analyze these two areas here uh, to find out what we got going on. And you can see, as we add stuff to the economic analysis for this field, our $200 is a total cost we have right now. So total cost versus earnings. This will update as we do anything on the field, which is super cool. So if we go on here, we're gonna hit Y to send it to the lab. It's gonna say the soil samples are now sent to a laboratory for analysis. You'll see the results in the soil types map soon. 
so we'll hit okay there and now what we're gonna do is actually just fast forward time it does not take hardly any time there we go two soil samples analyzed right there or analyzed i should say i don't know why i keep saying analyzed but anyhow now if we go into here um we're gonna click off of that screen right there um, you can see we have an environmental score as well for all of our fields that we own. Um, we'll talk more about this later on, but this environmental score, we want to get higher for better um, for better functions and stuff like that. But down here, we can see we have um, some loam through here, and you can turn off what you want, but loam through there, and you can see we have some sandy loam through there, and we don't have any silty clay or anything like that. And again, no soil samples currently out there taken. So it gives us our different soil types, and if you scroll across, we now have pH values for that area, nitrogen values, which look awful. Looks like, yeah, zero for most of it and 20 for a little bit of it there. And then yield, we don't have any data yet because we haven't harvested any crops. This will fill in as we harvest this field. And again, we're gonna talk about all that later on. Seed rate, we don't have a seed rate listed in here right now um, because we're not planting or anything like that. Um, and then we're back to soil types again. So now let's say I wanted to get a field map because this field here is pretty large. So I don't really wanna sample that whole thing. So if I click on this down here, I can purchase soil information. It'll give me a cross as number of samples, 50 at 5,000, service for better cost. So basically it's just telling you how many soil samples you need to do for this and it's gonna charge us all that's there. So 87.50, worth it for me to save the time. And now I have all this information. And again, it also added that 87.50 to our cost for soil samples, which is pretty cool. Now, if we look here, and again, also on the, the analysis, I can reset it. So after I do my first harvest, well, I don't have to pay for soil samples again, so you can reset it there, um, or you can keep it all on there and just keep it over time. But anyhow, now we can see down here, we have some silty clay, we have some loam, and we have some sandy loam. We can go through pH values, nitrogen values, and again, we don't have a yield value because we haven't harvested or a seed rate because we haven't seeded. So pretty cool, you can get all that information that way, which is really awesome. Now, past soil mapping and soil sampling, um, the soil types, what do they do? So we have these four soil types, but what do they actually change or what do they do? Um, so each one has a different yield potential as far as the crop. So you're gonna get different yields off of the different soil samples. Um, they also have different pH requirements. So the pH requirements, which if we scroll over to here, is varied depending on um, the soil type. So sandy loam is gonna require a pH value of 6.5, loamy sand is 6.0, loam requires a pH value of 6.75, and silty clay requires a pH value of 7.0. And again, you add lime to increase the pH values, but we're gonna go over how to change all this stuff later on. Now, nitrogen is affected by the crop type as well as the soil type. So uh, depending on what crop you have in here, as well as what soil type it's on, is gonna kind of change um, what nitrogen value you need to be at, which is pretty sweet. Now, different seed amounts also require are also required on these different soil types. So depending on what soil type we're on here, you're gonna see different seed rates have to be applied, whether it's low, standard, or high. I'm gonna put a chart up on the screen right now so you can kind of see uh, what we have working with. Now, this only is something that's gonna change for these crop types, which is wheat, barley, oats, canola, sunflower, corn, and soy. And again, it depends on the crop type and the soil type. So combined between those two, um, the seed chart kind of shows you what's gonna be required in those different areas. And you can uh, set that to automatic, which we're gonna go over in the future. Now, the final thing we're gonna cover in this video is the RTK station. So what the RTK station does, which I'll show you here, we should be able to access it in here. I'm actually not sure what uh, section it's under here, but I'm gonna guess, might be under, nope, none of our generators. There we go, finally found them. They are under sheds at the very end, so just so you don't make that same mistake I did. Now, there's two options for RTK stations, just like there was with FS19. So what they do is they improve your worker efficiency by up to 11%, which is actually, I've tested it on FS19. I'm assuming it's gonna work out the same way um, on FS22, but it does actually increase your worker speed. So as far as your AI workers doing jobs, they'll do them 11% faster, which overall is gonna be faster for you to get work done around your farm. And it's gonna save you money because it's gonna save you about 11% in worker wages, which is pretty sweet. You can place these anywhere. So once you place one, you don't need any more. There's no benefits to having more than one. So you have this guy right here, which you can place if you wanted to. And we also have a shed which is pretty cool so we'll hop out and take a look at that now you only need one of these they both have you see the antenna there the rtk station these both work as that so if i open this one up here you also have a storage shed which is pretty cool so if you wanted to kind of double up there you could do that otherwise you just need a little shack here um, if you wanted to go about it that way but these guys will again improve your worker speed by up to 11 percent Anyhow, guys, that is video one on precision farming. In the next video, we'll likely cover um, liming and uh, fertilizing, so nitrogen and pH level. So I'll see you guys on the next one here. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching.